Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to go over a hard algorithm problem called longest increasing path in a matrix. This problem has been asked at a bunch of tech companies, mainly Google, but also at all of the FANG companies. This is definitely a hard problem because it involves knowing how to write recursive algorithms, the DFS algorithm, and understanding how to use and implement memoization. So definitely like and subscribe if you are new here and check out my Patreon if you want to support me further and let's get into the video. Okay, so let's go over an example. Let's say we were given the following matrix. We need to find the longest increasing path. So in this matrix, it could either be three, four, five, six, or it could be two, four, five, six. Both of those paths have a length of four, so we would return four from our function. So like I mentioned, we're gonna solve this using DFS and memoization. The memoization piece is very, very critical for this problem because if we didn't do memoization here, then it would just be the brute force approach. But with memoization, we automatically get the optimal approach. So this will make more sense as we go through an example. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a variable called longest path, and this will just be a simple integer value that we initialize to zero that keeps track of, you guessed it, the longest path as we are iterating through this matrix. So we're going to loop over each position in the matrix and compute the longest path at each step. In each direction that we check, a recursive call is going to be made determining the longest path in that direction. So to start things off, we have our I pointer. We're going to start it at position 0, 0. So it's looking at the number 3. So we are going to continuously check all of our neighbors from every single position in this matrix to see if they're greater than our current position. So starting at 0, 0, if we look to the left of us, that's out of bounds. So this specific recursive call will just return 0. There's no path in the left direction. Likewise, we're going to look up. That is also out of bounds, so we return 0 from the up direction. If we look down, that has a number 3. Well, 3 is equal to 3, and we're looking for a path that is strictly greater. So we're just going to ignore this down direction as well, so we're going to return 0. And then finally, if we look to the right of position 0, 0, we see that we have a 4. And 4 is greater than 3, that is strictly greater, so that means we are going to do another recursive call at position 0, 1 now. So, so far, all of our directions except the right direction has returned 0 from its own recursive call. So now we're at position 0, 1. If we look to the left of us, 3 is less than 4, so we return 0. If we look above us, that's out of bounds, we return 0. If we look down, 2 is less than 4. Once again, we're going to return 0. And then finally, if we look to the right, 5 is greater than 4, so that means we're going to make another recursive call to position 0, 2. So what we're doing right now is the actual DFS portion. The memoization comes in a little bit. So at position 0, 2, our left, up, and right directions, we are going to return zero because each of those directions either are out of bounds or the numbers are less than what our current number is at. However, if we look down at this position, six is greater than five, and that means we're going to make another recursive call to position one, two. The directions up and left are less than our current position, so we're going to return zero. And then our right and down directions are out of bounds, so we're also going to return zero from those directions. And so here is the interesting part of this recursive algorithm. At position one, two, we have completely exhausted looking in all of the directions. So now what we're going to do is get the maximum in all directions. So we get the max from the left, up, right, and down, and that would just be zero. And then with this maximum that we've computed, we're going to plus another number one to it. The reason why we add one is because our current position alone is a path of size one. Right now, six by itself is its own strictly increasing path. The reason why we have to compute the maximum in all the directions is because, once again, we're trying to find the longest path. We don't want to get the minimum, we want the very maximum that we can find. And now on to the memoization portion. Memoization means to cache previous recursive calls that we have already made. Doing this will save many steps in a recursive algorithm. 
So what we're gonna do is initialize a 2D matrix that has the same number of rows and columns as our input matrix. Right now, all of the positions in this matrix are just initialized to zero. But now what we're gonna do is update our current position in our cache to just be one, the value that we just computed. So right now we're looking at position one, two. So at position one, two in our cache matrix, we're gonna put that value that we've computed. So that way, if we ever end up at position one, two again, we can just return the cached value. And so now we're gonna go back down the call stack that we made. So from position one, two, we are going to return the value one. So at position zero, two now, our down direction is taking that value of one. So then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the maximum in all the directions from position zero, two, which would just be one. And then we plus another one to account for the current position for a total of two. And then just like before, we're gonna update our cache again. Our current position is zero, two. So then we're gonna put two in our cache. And then from position zero, two, we're going to return two back to position zero one. Position zero one's right direction has a value of two. We get the max in all of the directions, which is two plus another one for the current position for a total of three. Once again, we update our current position in the cache, which would be a total of three. Finally, from position zero zero, our right direction is returning three. So we get the maximum in all of the directions, which would be three plus another one, we update our current position in the cache, three plus one is four. So now as you can see, we've exhausted all of our recursive calls starting at position zero, zero. So we're gonna update our longest path variable that we initialized in the beginning to be four. Now that we've done that, we're just gonna continue iterating through our matrix and we're gonna perform the same recursive steps that we just did. So we iterate to position zero, one, but keep in mind we have already visited this position we can verify this by looking at the same position in our cache. And if it is greater than zero, then we know we have already been here before. And since it is greater than zero at this position, we just return the number in our cache, which is three. Three is not greater than our current longest path of four, so we don't do anything. We move to position zero, two, once again, we have visited this position already, and we can verify this by checking the cache. Two is less than four, so we do nothing. We move to position one, zero. Our cache value at this position is zero. So what that means is we need to visit it. So if you look to the left of us, that's out of bounds, we return zero. If we look above us, that is three is equal to three, so we return zero. Down is out of bounds, return zero. And then to the right of us, two is less than three and we're gonna ignore it, so return zero from that direction as well. The max in all of these directions is zero plus another one for the current position, so that would be a value of one, and now we're gonna update our current position in our cache to be a value of one. So we've exhausted all of the recursive calls at this position, so we're gonna compare this with our current longest path, but one is not greater than four, so we do nothing. Now we're gonna move to position one, one. Our cache value is zero, so we must visit it. Our down direction is out of bounds, so we return zero. Our right direction, six is greater than two, and we already have a cached value at this position. So we're just gonna return whatever the cache value is at position one, two, which would be one. In our up direction, four is greater than two, and once again, we've already been here before, so we return the cached value, which is three. In our left direction, three is greater than two. We've already visited this, so we return the cache value to be one. So the maximum in all of these directions between one, three, one, and zero would be three, plus another one for our current position. So we're gonna update our cache, three plus one is four. So we're gonna compare four with four, and obviously that's not greater, so we're gonna do nothing. And then finally, we move to position one, two. We have already visited this, so we return the cached value of one. And by the end of iteration over our matrix, our longest path is four. The longest path can technically come from two different paths of size four, this one and this one. All right, so let's jump into the code. We are given a 2D integer matrix, and then we need to return an integer, which will be the longest increasing path. 
So to start things off, we need to make sure that this matrix is even valid. If it's null or empty, we know we just want to return immediately. So we could say if matrix equals null or matrix dot length equals zero, just return zero. And now what we can do is extract the number of rows and columns we have in our matrix. This will be useful later on. And then let's also initialize that variable that we had longest path. So we'll say int n is equal to matrix dot length. M is equal to matrix at index zero dot length. So this is M is no, the number of columns we have. And then we're also going to have longest path. And this can just be zero. Now what we want to do is initialize our cache. So remember, our cache is the same amount of rows and columns as our matrix. And we already have, conveniently, N and M. So we can say int, it's going to be a 2D array. We're going to say cache equals new int of N and M. So it's the same size as our input matrix. And now what we want to do is start iterating over all of the elements in our matrix. So now that we have these nested for loops, this is where the DFS is going to come into play. We need to write a recursive algorithm that is called on every iteration of each loop. So let's come in here, we'll say int, and we're going to compute the longest path. Let's just assume that we have this function right now. So we'll say int longest, and we can call it longest increasing path. And we're going to pass in a couple things to this recursive function. Well, obviously, we're going to need our matrix. We're also going to need our cache that we initialized above. We're also going to need the rows, columns, uh, yeah, rows, columns, and then our current position. So we'll say n, m, and then our current position would be i and j. So assuming that we have this recursive algorithm written, we just need to compute our maximum. So we'll say longest path equals math.max between longest path and longest. And then when we come out of this for loop, we just return the longest path. So now all we need to do is implement this longest increasing path recursive DFS function. Okay, so I've written out the method signature. The first thing we want to do is check if we have already been at this position before. And we can do that by seeing if our current cache position is zero or not. So what we can do is we're going to say if cache at position i, j, if it's greater than zero, that means we have computed this position already. And we can just return cache at i, j. So this part is exactly the memoization piece that we discussed. If we make it outside of this if statement, we have not been at this position before, and this is where we're going to check all of our neighbors, so the up, right, down, and left positions. So the first thing we can do, let's initialize a variable. We could say max. And another thing, since we need to check all directions, we can initialize up here a very easy 2D integer array to specify all the directions. So we could say private int directions. And so we're going to say 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, negative 1. So some of you may have seen this little trick before. I explained it in one of my videos, but if you haven't, it's no problem. I'll still explain it. So 1, 0, that's saying that I want to check in the down direction. So 1 in this case is our x value, and then 0 is our y value. And so if, say we were at position 0, 0, if we added 1, 0 to position 0, 0, that would result in 1, 0, and that's the downward direction. And that's the same logic for any of these other integer arrays. So now if we come down here, we're going to say for int of direction in directions, we're going to compute a new x and y coordinate. So we'll say x is equal to direction at position 0 plus i. And then our y value is going to be direction at position 1 plus j. And so now that we have these new x and y coordinates, we just need to see if it's a valid coordinate or not. 
So we need to make sure that it's still in the bounds and that it's greater than the previous position that we were computing. So we could say if x is greater than negative 1 and y is greater than negative 1 and x is less than n and y is less than m and matrix at position x, y, if it's strictly greater than matrix at position i, j, what this means is that this position at x, y is a valid coordinate. And so we're going to make a recursive call to this same function, but with x, y passed in as our current position. And so what we can say is int longest equals longest increasing path. We're going to pass in our matrix, our cache, n, and m, but now our i and j value get updated to x and y. So x, y, and then we just need to compute our maximum. So we'll say max equals math.max between max and then the longest value that we compute. And then finally, so when we come out of this for loop, we're going to say cache at ij equals max plus one, and then just return the value in our cache that we have just set. So remember, the reason why we do plus one is because we need to account for the current position that we are looking at. So let's submit this to make sure it works. And it does. So keep in mind that if we did not do memoization, this would be a brute force algorithm because that means that we would be recomputing a bunch of previous steps that we have already computed, which is very, very inefficient. So just to drive this point home, let's say I commented out line 19. If I comment out line 19, that means that we are always going to recompute the recursive calls, even if we have already done it previously. If I submit this now, now you can see I get a time limit exceeded because it the algorithm, it would eventually work, but it simply takes too long because it has to recompute so many things that it has already computed. So one line of code is the difference between having the brute force and the optimized approach. So that's why memoization is very, very critical to learn. All right, so our time complexity is going to be big O of n times m, where n is the number of rows we have and m is the number of columns. In the worst case, we have to iterate over each index in our matrix two times. So that would be big O of n times m plus big O of n times m, which is two times big O of n times m. And then we just drop the constant and we're just left with big O of n times m. And then our space complexity is also big O of n times m because our cache on line eight, we have to initialize new memory with the number of rows and columns that we have in our input matrix. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, definitely consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And please post any other problems that you want me to solve in the comments. I will definitely try to get to them, whether they are easy, medium, or hard. And check out my Patreon if you want to support me further outside of YouTube. It really does help out. And with that, I will see you guys next time. I don't think you guys realize how bad I am at outros. Look at how long I've been doing this.